Coming up in this episode of Beneath the Surface presented by Rockwell, see how Copenhagen is taking the lead on sustainable tourism. Discover how the best view in the city is tackling the energy crisis. We learn about CLGP's revolutionary impact league and our athletes get inspired by Tour de France. One of the coolest things about CLGP is you get to see the best sailors racing the world's fastest boats. But as I visit the iconic cities on the CLGP circuit, I wonder what makes these places unique away from the race course. I've discovered people from all over the world striving for a better future, redefining social responsibility and driving technical innovation, redesigning how we think about sustainability. If you're interested in finding out what makes these places really tick, join me as we go beneath the surface. And this time we're in one of the greenest cities in the world, Denmark's capital, Copenhagen, for the Rockwall Denmark Sail Grand Prix. And one of the best places to watch the racing, Trikrona 4, aka Rock Island, where no doubt Denmark's LGP team will have much support. After a podium place in the last round, Denmark's LGP team heads into our home event in fifth place overall. Last season in Aarhus, the team won their first fleet race ever in CLGP, so we'll be looking to repeat the feat again in Copenhagen. And before the racing started here in the capital, the team were joined on the F50 by Danish racing driver Kevin Magnussen. And to see his experience on the boat, check out our social media. Now, normally at this point in the show, I'd give us a whistle-stop tour of our CLGP host city, but we thought, you know what? We're at home, we're in Denmark, let's ask a couple of experts to show us around. So here's Copenhagen natives Hans Christian and Katja to give us Copenhagen in 60 seconds. This is my city, come take a look with me. Copenhagen is one of the world's biggest cycling cities. Nearly half of us ride to work or to school, covering over one million kilometers per day. So it's not very often here in Europe you actually see people swimming inside the city centers. It's normally, it's not allowed, but here in Copenhagen, you're free to do it, the water is clean, and it's just enjoying your time here. Copenhagen has the longest pedestrianized shopping street in the world. Strahl runs all the way from the city hall and to Kongs Nytorv, and it's over one kilometer long. And the best thing about it, no cars. So it's important to mention that this city ranks second in the world for global living, based on quality of life. According to the UN, the global seawater level will rise up to one meter at the end of this century if global warming continues. TV2 has installed 15 benches all over the city to increase awareness around climate change. That was Copenhagen in 60 seconds. Whee! Hey guys, Katja here. For your chance to win some team gear, count the F50s that appears on the screen and comment in the box below. And congratulations to Travis from Plymouth who correctly counted five F50s on the screen. Copenhagen is famously green and notably clean. But how does a city like this achieve sustainable success on the global stage? I'm going to investigate just how this city integrates sustainability into everything it does, from tourism, energy production, international sporting events, and everything else in between. But showcasing the best of Copenhagen falls to the city's tourist board, Wonderful Copenhagen. The upshot of that is an increase in visitors, and that can present some unique challenges. Wonderful Copenhagen is trying to prove that sustainable tourism isn't just a buzzword. Wonderful Copenhagen has been working with sustainable uh, tourism and sustainable solutions for a very long time. For both visitors but also the, um, the actors in the city, some of the challenges that we face we share with a lot of other destinations that when a lot of people are in the city at the same time then it, it tends to become a little condensed in certain places and what we do to overcome that is to try and point out how can you explore the city further even uh, the surroundings. There's been done a lot of efforts to make it a very bikeable city. It's a walkable city. It's very easy to get around with public transportation. Then the harbor has been cleaned up, which is a, ma a major difference from just like 15 years ago. Now you can actually swim in the harbor and everybody does it. If you learn how to collect and sort your trash, you're also doing it the Copenhagen ways. What we basically do is to come up with um, offers 
For, for instance, how can we get most of our uh, partners certified with eco certifications? How can we make sure the visitors know where to go and you know rent a bike? where they can refill their water bottles. We have a, a, an app, for instance, at Planet Copenhagen, that will guide visitors uh, to sustainable choices while they're here. We also have a sustainability guide that is more aimed at meeting planners. We monitor on a very regular basis views on the growth of tourism in Copenhagen. It's very important to us that we just don't go do, that we actually have data uh, that will tell us uh, what the right choices are. We want to use it for good and have them go home inspired by the way we live and how we go about sustainability in our own city. Having recently hosted events like Euro 2020, the Tour de France and SailGP, sports tourism is also on the rise in Copenhagen and the city is looking to welcome events which reflect its own values. SailGP is not only an event that speaks to the values of Copenhagen, it takes place, place on the water and our harbour that we're very proud of, but also SailGP come with um, sustainable values that are very aligned with ours. So what we hope when an event like SailGP come to Copenhagen is that they take inspiration from us, of course, but also that we learn a huge amount from them and their innovative solutions. Sustainable tourism is vitally important, but keeping Copenhagen moving on a day-to-day -day basis for its citizens has an even greater impact. Copenhagen is setting the standard through smart infrastructure and green collaborations, like Copenhill, behind me. Copenhill is a waste to energy plant with a ski slope on top. Uh, we can ski all year round, it's a dry slope. Uh, you can take the elevator to the top, you can uh, walk, climb, hike uh, to the rooftop uh, on the very top and have a splendid view of uh, Copenhagen. What we do here is that we take the residual waste after we have recycled and reused uh, all that's possible to recycle and reuse. We only take the residual part here and we make energy from it. The place where we are now, there's been a waste to energy plant for 40 years. That time it was the outskirt of the city. Now the city has evolved and, and grown and now we're actually in the middle of the city. So it has to be attractive as well. Copenhill was built on the idea of having public access to a place where we are very sustainable in, uh, in Copenhagen. So when uh, we have uh, heated up the, the furnaces and they reach about 850 degrees, then uh, we put on waste on it and it ignites. And it is a self-sustainable process. We don't add any uh, gas or oil or anything like this. It heats up water and this water will drive a, a steam turbine and uh, another part of the water will go into the district heating system. So here we make uh, energy, good, clean uh, energy. I think this is a very good example of, of circularity that we turn this environmental problem into a sustainable energy source. By doing that, uh, we can provide energy for about 90,000 households of heat and also of electricity every year. Residual waste is a problem. It, it has no value. You can put it on landfill and then it will emit methane. We actually emit uh, no hazardous substances whatsoever. What comes out of our chimney is, uh, is water vapor uh, and of course CO2. And we are working to implement full-scale uh, carbon capture technology at ARC. When you visit Copenhill, you can see that it's, it's real trees and, and grass and you don't feel like you're on top of a building. Uh, every tree and plant has been chosen for the Nordic environment and the boilers are very well insulated. Inside there's about uh, 1100 degrees, but you can actually put your hand on the boiler. And some of the products that we use to, to insulate uh, our equipment is rock wool. And of course, the more we insulate, uh, the, uh, the more uh, energy we can get out for district heating and making electricity for the city. And we have probably the most energy efficient plant in the world. There's a huge energy crisis uh, at the moment. When we burn waste to make energy, uh, we actually receive money for the waste that we receive. Unlike any other uh, energy company, they need to pay uh, for their fuel. And therefore, we are able to make uh, quite a good uh, business case, uh, cheap heat for the city. It is an uh, iconic building and very different from other waste to energy plants. This is the way that, that, that we love to see uh, the future develop, to be an uh, including environment but still uh, make the physical installations to be able to treat the, the challenges of the city. And the city produces a hell of a lot of waste and we need to take care of it. 
So it makes me very uh, proud and very happy to be part of this. And to round off our sustainable story here in Copenhagen, let's see what Cell GP and our Danish team are doing at the tech base to make the event cleaner and a little bit greener. Last year, our first ever sustainable, fully powered by nature event was Aarhus. And again in Copenhagen, everything is powered by clean energy, mostly powered by the wind. And we want to be powered by nature. That is the world we want. We've set targets by 2025 to be powered by nature on water, on the fleet and at our events. So the Impact League is a little bit like our, our sailing competition out on the water. But the Impact League is all about how big impact we have on the, on the world we live in. One of the big focuses here in, the, in CDP and especially in the, in the Rockwell team is, is, is about the sustainability and how we can make our team base and also on water operations more sustainable. So it's all about the small things because we all know what to do but it's about making it happen. So one of the things we're doing here in the team base is for example the, the, the cranes or the winches that pull up the boat. Every night we turn the fans off, it's a 24 hour uh, running thing. Even though we don't use it, it will consume power. For example, the fridge, the fridge it has a timer on it. Uh, so in our changing room and in our meeting room container, we are using LED lighting. And uh, of course, we are dividing all trash in the right weight stream so they can be recycled or they can get burned or, or how it works in the countries we move at. A lot of people, I think, know the, the little capsules you use in your Nespresso machine. But in, in our team base, we're using coffee beans. So we're not having that excess waste uh, making our own coffee. I think the Impact League is a really good idea. I think that we can drive each other through competition is good. Of course, it shouldn't hinder uh, collaboration. And, and it's really important uh, to do this here and to talk about it because as a sport, we should be leading the way. Some other uh, athletes you know, or different teams said to me, this is a distraction. And they're the ones who right now are the most passionate and leaning into this. They've seen the value. And, and Hans Christian calls me and my team all the time, engages with the Impact League. That just shows behavioural science, mindset shifts. It's only one season of the Impact League and look where our athletes are. They're all talking about it. They're all thinking about it. They're all challenging it, but that's what we want. At this event, there is no generators. It is all clean energy, which is very exciting. And I think that's where Denmark can do it. Other cities we go to don't have that infrastructure. So it's amazing to be 100% powered by nature here in Copenhagen. Welcome to the Rock Challenge and this time we're coming from Copenhagen. Recently our athletes have been on thin ice but they've remained on the ball. This challenge is inspired by Denmark's recent Tour de France victory. But do our athletes have the appetite to repeat the feat? It's simple. Cycle as fast as you can on this exercise bike for one minute, roared on by the Tour de France crowd. But here's the twist. Hans Christian and Julius have 60 seconds to make a Danish classic, the hot dog, and they can only use a fork and a spoon in their mouths to move the ingredients from the prep table to the dinner table. The winning criteria is simple, presentation. Grilled hot dogs topped with creamy curried remoulade sauce, fresh pickled cucumbers and crispy fried shallots. Who will win the Cell GP yellow jersey? Yeah, my, my tactics will probably be go as fast as I can and presentation will be, you know, I can somehow make it work. Yeah, I bike a lot. Bike everywhere. I ate a lot of hot dogs while biking, but ne ne never made one. Presentation, I don't know if I'm confident there, but the taste, I will definitely hit. I put the remoulade sauce in the middle and on the sides to make the cross. It is a work of art and I will call this uh, sausage a la Julius. Oh, it's not very good. Oh. Yeah, sprinkle. Yeah. A little salt bay action. Salt bay. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident. I think it looked better than the other one. At least, so, uh... Okay, guys. After a long deliberation by our ex panel, mm. the winner of the Tour de Hot Dog 2022 is. Julius! Yeah. 
I was pretty confident going into this challenge, but uh, when I came back looking at Hansi's mess here, I got a bit nervous. But uh, yeah, I'm happy. Let me start with the, the base. Mm. Who's that, mate? Oh, man. That's really good. That's all from here in Copenhagen, where a passionate home crowd witnessed Denmark's LGP team finish third on the podium for the second event in a row. And we now move into third place overall in the season championship. If you want to catch the race highlights, check out cellgp.com forward slash watch. And if you want to follow the Denmark CLGP team, go to at CLGPDen on social media. See you next time as we go beneath the surface in Saint-Tropez.